It's beautiful, right? Spring has, spring has sprung, as they say. Welcome, David. There's a few extra chairs there. A seat. Cool. All right. This is uh, feels pretty good. I, Jesse just said it feels like the old days. This is, uh, feels like how we have to, used to have sales meetings back in the day. So I think we'll have to get back to that. What do you think, Bob? Yeah, cool. Right on. You have to wear pants, though, right? That's the only problem. Uh, yeah. But anyway, so anyways, thanks for coming. Uh, and again, I'll just kind of go over a bunch of things to, before we get into some of the content. Uh, first and foremost, um, this is in response to, to you guys, right? Probably this is the most asked question uh, that we get as brokers. Uh, and it's it's a loaded, it, you know, either should I join a team or what, what's the process or should I start a team? What's the process? And it ends up being like it's usually like an hour long conversation. And uh, in the interest of efficiency, you know, there's probably 25 hours of conversation. So we're going to condense that today and uh, answer all your questions, hopefully. Also, I want this to be interactive. Ask, ask as many questions as you want. You know, I'm not holding anything. I'm not uh, holding any cards here. Uh, I'm going to go over all the stuff. If you have any questions along the way, I, may, I might say, hey, I'm going to get to that and wait for the next slide. Uh, or if I address it that time, that's cool too. Uh, as well, uh, I always say this, I am not pro or anti team, right? This is not, um, we have a lot of teams at our brokerage uh, and it's not because I force people into it. My job is to give you the information, uh, what we've learned over the years from trial and error, making a lot of mistakes and other agents making mistakes. Uh, and then we can actually, and we've developed, we've actually learned a lot through all the experience. And so my job is to give you the information, help you make an informed decision. Um, on that note, uh, just a bit of background. When I started uh, brokering, if that's a word, in 2015, um, we kind of saw Winnipeg. Uh, if you haven't noticed, Winnipeg is behind on a lot of things, uh, almost everything. And uh, one of the things that they were behind on was teams. Uh, teams were uh, huge in the United States already back then, seven years ago. And in Canada, there was prevalence of teams. We kind of saw the trend coming. In Winnipeg, there was only a handful at that time. 
And so um, right from the get go, I said, well, this is what's coming down the pipe. So I'm going to learn about it. So I flew across Canada. I took every single training course on Teams, flew different speakers. I don't know anybody's been around long enough for Pamela Ehrman. Is anybody there? For Anyways, when Pamela Ehrman from Virginia was a team expert that I met in San Diego, so flew her in. She did team trainings for us, designed our contracts, all that kind of stuff. So a lot of work. I flew across the country as well, like interviewed team leaders, interviewed other brokers, um, taking training through Roll of Page, through Ken Goodfellow training. A lot of effort and a lot of training and time has went into this. And then, of course, the wonderful teacher of experience, uh, just learning along the way, right? And making some mistakes, making some missteps and, and learning the way sometimes as well. So, um, you know, this isn't uh, everything that there could possibly be. I'm sure there's some things I might have left out. If you have questions, again, let's ask. Let's talk about it. Um, but it's coming from a place right now of a lot of research, a lot of training and uh, a lot of agents uh, who've come before you. So uh, just, I know you can't see this very well, but the agenda, we're going to talk about teams and partnerships, what the difference is. We're going to talk about why you should even think about joining or starting a team, pros and cons of each, when's the right time, how to, how to different team compositions, the value proposition, what agents actually want, asking the right questions, doing some self-assessment exercises. And then we're going to break down the second part here a bit more into nuances of hiring unlicensed help, so administrative assistance uh, and licensed help as in uh, team members. So... Oh, now there's people in this room that are looking to start a team potentially. And there's look team, and there's people here looking to join a team, right? So you guys should maybe talk to each other after the meeting, right? Seems like it might be some natural fits, but nonetheless, um, you know, it, it's an, a lot of the content is you know if this is like, hey, here's what it is for a team leader. Well, I'll just invert it, and that's going to be the same kind of thing for for joining a team, right? So I don't have every single slide duplicated for. This is if you're a team leader and this is if you're not, right? Otherwise, you just, it's gonna be too many slides and it's gonna take us six hours to get through this. So you gotta put your thinking caps on a little bit and say, oh, that's if that's what he's saying about a team leader, well, how would I, how can I apply this as a team member or vice versa, right? So, and again, if there's anything I don't get to, please uh, don't hesitate to ask, but we will talk money, we'll talk splits today. Um, we'll try to get into as much nitty gritty uh, as possible. Sound good so far? We're in? Okay, cool. All righty, so this is uh, the first thing to talk about. What is a... Um, a team versus a partnership. Now, this all starts with the definition, right? People use the word team everywhere, right? Team, team, team is kind of this ubiquitous thing. Everyone knows, I'll join my team. Uh, so there's also team from a technical aspect and there's team from a marketing aspect. And so I just kind of want to define what we're talking when we talk about team here versus a partnership. So can you see that in the back okay? Or? Yep. Okay, good. Um, and so a team by definition is two or more people writing underneath one agent's name okay so we have a lot of different examples of that you know i'll just pick on i'll pick on derek he's right next door right Derek, you know he's got agents who work work on his team and when they sell a home or take a listing it goes under his name that is team the origin of a team how this all started was essentially you know agents got really busy agents had a lot of listings a lot of buyers and they said oh my gosh i'm too busy i need to actually duplicate myself i have to clone myself i have to be in two places at once impossible to do and i but hey still i want to keep you know i want to keep all the awards and status and commission right so um because agents love awards so anyways that's how teams were formed is hey come work for me but when you work you write under my name you write my name on the offer right so that's a way of essentially cloning themselves and going out another way of looking at this is a team is a brokerage okay uh, and this really for me kind of just the light bulb flipped when I was learning a lot was, oh, what a team is, is just a little broker. It's just a small brokerage. And some teams are, are actually quite large, right? I think the Mark Ferris team I know out of Ontario, he has like 56 agents working for him. Well, that's a really big team. That's just a small brokerage, right? But even a team of two, a team of three, just, just for your to wrap your heads around it, what they are is a little brokerage and that's how they kind of have to operate. And if you, any, uh, I'll pick on David DeLue in the room, just because he's been around for uh, a seasoned veteran in the room, you remember brokerages uh, back in the day in the 80s and whatever else, were there 200 person broker? No, like everything was relatively small. There were 50-50 splits on everything. And if anybody watched Glengarry Glen Ross, okay, you're all realtors. You need to watch Glengarry Glen Ross. It's the only movie made about a real estate brokerage ever <laughs> that I'm aware of. But anyways, in Glengarry Glen Ross, it's uh, also Alec Baldwin, Al Pacino, Kevin Spacey, Oh, there's some other, it's actually like really well acted, won awards and all that kind of stuff. Nonetheless, um, in it, the broker 
the team leader, has all the leads, right? And all the agents come up to him and was like, hey, man, where are the leads? Where are the good leads? You give them the, those leads to, to Bob and, the, all right? And they would always complain about, and he's like, you're not getting these leads, right? These leads are for closers. And there's big, there's all these epic dialogues. ABCs always be closing. Anybody heard of this? Uh, okay, watch the movie. Right? You got some real estate. You got to watch real estate movies. Um, there's like three that I'm aware of. So anyways, um, so you got to check that out. But anyways, that's how brokerages were back in the day, right? And then at the evolution of brokerages went and into, you know, larger brokerages. And then the franchise model really kicked in. And then 100% plans and all this kind of stuff changed the entire landscape of brokerages. And now we're having this team, uh, tr let's call it a trend for lack of better words. And what it is, is a repeat to where it was in the 70s and 80s. And they're just really small brokerages. And usually the team leader has a lot of the, the leads to give out and they help build the team through different ways. It's just a brokerage from the 80s. It's a brokerage within a brokerage. Mm -hmm. So I just, for your, um, you know, but they don't have to do any of the FinTrack, which is, this is why they like that. <laughs> but anyways, uh, so just for a mindset, that's kind of what it is when you're thinking about that. I'll kind of use that parallel a lot today. So wait, that's what a team is. Two are people running on one name. A partnership, this is what I call a partnership. This is where a lot of agents do this as well. And they think it's a team, but is it really? Uh, essentially, it's two or more agents and they're just, they're working together. They're co-branding, co-listing, co-selling, and they share in all commissions and expenses, right? Maybe it's 50-50, maybe it's a different split, but essentially it's agents working together saying, hey, let's go on garbage cans and billboards together because I want to share my expenses and let's just like, let's buddy up. Um, but no, we, they both want their own name on the offers. Um, you know, they'll go, they'll have two names on the offer. They'll share expenses, et cetera. They'll see them on billboards and garbage cans and all that kind of stuff. So that's what I would call a partnership, right? But their commissions are each their own and they can chop it up how they want, okay? Now partnerships, um, I've only seen a couple ones that actually work because partnerships are great when everything is equal, when production is equal. And then it's like, oh, what happens when one sells 10 homes one month and one sells one home? Well, now all of a sudden your partnership is really imbalanced and it, it, it you know, you can do it for maybe a month or two, but after a while it starts to get a little strained because it's, it's, it's the production is unequal, right? That makes sense. But anyway, so most, that's just, I want to clarify that because a lot of people ask, well, you know what, when they think of team, they're actually thinking of a partnership. They just want to work together with somebody, right? For various reasons. And a team is actually, again, one team leader, them going under the name. Any questions on that? Cool. All right. Slide. What's going on here? There we go. So at this point, you know, um, the, the questions are, what do you actually need in your business, right? Now, whether what side of this you're on, Right? What kind of support does your business need? If they're starting a team or you're looking at joining, what support do you need for your business? Um, for those team leaders, do you need sales uh, help? Do you, know, do you need to duplicate yourself and be two places at once? Or do you need administrative help? Right? License, unlicensed, full-time or part-time, newer experience, roles, titles, compensation. Right? Those are all the questions you might be asking yourself right now. Right? This is, um, again, always an important thing. We have to start with why, right? And this is why the meeting, when somebody asks me about a team, doesn't take five minutes. It's a much longer question or a much longer meeting because we have to talk about the motivation. Why are you actually considering doing this? What are you hoping to achieve? If you've been to any of my trainings or any of my coaching, I always start with the end in mind. Here's the goal. Here's what I want to get. And I reverse engineer it, work backwards to get to the goal. This is how my brain works. And this is how you need to think about joining uh, or thinking about a team as well. Because there are some horrible reasons to start a team. What would be an, an example of a bad reason to start a team? Can we take one? Less business. Less business? Less business. Mean, less oh, if you want to do, if you're trying to do less sales? Maybe, unless you're looking for work-life balance, but. Here's a bad one. I know a guy. My buddy's getting into the business. So I should start a team. Pretty much the worst reason. Okay. And I've had, we've had people do it. Um, and it, it usually doesn't work that way. Right. Cause you have to go through the entire process. It's just like, Oh, I know a person or I really like them or, you know um, it's just like, they asked me. And so I think it's a great idea. Right. Uh, it just, that's the worst possible way to start because you haven't done any other work necessarily. So anyways, so this is why some people start looking at starting teams and we're going to get, we'll flip the side around by joining teams in a bit. But anyways, you know, so a lot of people, it's for volume, increased income and market share, right? You can grow yourself, grow your team, duplicate yourself for those things. Uh, hey, let's be real. Some people do it for status and winning awards, right? For leverage and growth. 
right? They keep the leads and open house opportunities uh, within the team, right? So when we talk about leverage, right? That is, um, you know, if you're, let's say an investor, right? And you're highly leveraged, that means when you sleep, your money is making money, right? So as a team leader, you can be on the golf course and your team can be out selling for you, right? So you can be making money while you golf, which is one of my personal favorites. But nonetheless, right? For having, for balance, more personal time, of course, more improved service as well. We'll get, touch on that in a bit, but teams are, you know, the idea is supposed to be that there's improved service for your clients, more repeat and referral business, okay? So there's, there's pros and cons to this. And uh, again, I'll touch on the joining side as well, but um, right, it should result in a higher level of service. That's a, that's a pro, right? If it doesn't, if it's not doing that, then your team actually is informed properly, um, but you need to have a better level of service for your clients. That's always what we're after. And that's usually why something starts is because, oh man, there's so many things slipping through the cracks, right? Oh, oh, I'm forgetting to do those things. Oops, I forgot to post the Kijiji ad. Oops, I forgot to do this. Oops, I can't get back to that client. I can't handle my leads properly. I'm giving them out too much, which we'll get to. Um, you should have better work-life balance. It should give you awards and recognition, right? Uh, on the con side of things, uh, this is the biggest con is it's very hard for not all, but for most to switch from an agent mindset to a leader mindset. You now have employees, you now have staff, now you have people you have to look after and lead and mentor, et cetera. And agents uh, love, that's why you guys are agents usually is for flexibility and doing your own thing and running around doing whatever you want every day. No one can tell me what to do, right? That's why we like being realtors. And then all of a sudden it's like, oh shoot, now I have all these other responsibilities. I have to be a manager, I have to be a leader as opposed to just leading myself, right? Um, other big one, if your sales and lead generation are inconsistent, a team will not solve them, right? They will not solve those problems. It will only uh, highlight it. You're essentially, um, I'll use the analogy um, for anybody who's married in the room or anything like that. Just my personal belief on this one. Feel free to believe something else, but uh, I don't subscribe to the whole you complete me thing. Like I'm a half a person and you're the missing part and now we're together and we're one. Uh, you know, I think that's bullshit. Uh, personally, I think marriage should be two complete people choosing to be together. That's just me, right? I'm not looking for somebody to fill the hole in my heart or anything like that and vice versa. I want somebody who's complete and let's go be together. My opinion. So when you have a team leader, the same thing is like, we're not trying to like, you know, um, you know, oh, you're going to solve all my problems now. Right of a team. Oh, this person—they're good at that, so they're going to solve all my problems. No, if you're if you're a wreck, and most likely the other agents are wrecked, then I got two wrecks to get. Right, which just means horrible, horrible tragedy. Right, and also seen it happen. Okay. Um, also, if your business systems are organized, again, teaming is not going to solve that. Right, it's only going to make problems worse. I think I made that analogy clear. I hope. All right. Okay, so. When we're looking at an, being an effective team leader, these are some things that, again, now if you're looking at joining as an example, you know, flip it around here and go, okay, if I'm interviewing or I'm looking at joining a team, the team leader better have this stuff, okay? So just flip it around here. And if you're looking at being a team leader, these are the things that you're gonna actually need, right? You have to have a good communicator. You have to give feedback, um, not micromanaging. You have to make time for training and development. There's a couple of empty chairs in here, Elliot, you want? Right, you have to delegate, set goals, direction, realistic timelines. You have to be able to answer questions. You can't expect people to just know, right? Sounds like a broker, right? Has respect for individuals and their lives. You have to provide a work environment. You have to develop routines and systems, right? Whoops, sorry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Backwards, right? So there's a bunch of things. Okay. So moving on, when's the right time, right? When is it the right time to, we're going to do, to start a team and we're going to do join a team? So the right time to start a team. I'll actually, I'll throw it to the group. When do you think is the right time? Where are some signals that you're like, oh, might be time to start a team. Slipping through the cracks. Things slipping through the cracks? Yep. Leads are you just, yeah, leads are just slipping. slipping. They're dying, right? Exactly, because you're not following up. And you're behind on paperwork. <laughs> behind, on, behind on paperwork, yeah, yeah. I would really want to ask for a show of hands on who's behind on paper because I already know. It's okay. <laughs> Any other reasons? Okay, no problem. Okay, so you do need to have your lead generation and conversion systems, again, are working relatively smoothly. Okay, again, you have some level of consistency coming in. Right. If you're still riding the roller coaster of big month, slow month, big month, slow month, slow period, busy period, 
Um, again, it can get, it might not, again, it doesn't mean an absolute no, but it's just a caution, right? It's a red, it's a yellow caution light, right? Typically speaking, 30 to 40 sales annually with four to five active buyers, two listings at any given time. That is, again, it's a loose guideline, but about 30 to 40 sales, about 40, I even say something's 40 to 50, um, is about what you should be looking at. Because for instance, if you're doing 20 deals and you want to go to 40 deals, you can do that. You can do that and you shouldn't have to sacrifice your whole life to do that. If you want to go from 40 deals to 80 deals, whew, that's a jump, right? It's a jump. Those, you know, and usually maybe 50, 60, depending if you're single married or how much time you have, it's those extra 20 deals, those extra 30 deals are really heavy, right? It's a lot to carry an extra 20 clients, an extra 20 vendors or whatever it is. And again, it does depend on your business model. If you're a heavy listing agent, 50 listings is way different than 50 buyers, right? So again, use this, it's a loose scale, but around that time is when you're going, hey, I'm doing 40, 50 ends. How do I get to the next level? It's very difficult to do it on your own unless you're willing to sacrifice a lot of time uh, and, and family and things like that. But again, some people don't have those things and they can do it, right? Um, also, you're referring out leads and open house opportunities regularly, right? So you're just setting, you're setting business away, right? Um, that's one of the things, the ideas of leverage, right? If I'm giving, hey, I'm really busy, so I'm going to give Irene a lead. That's great. Or, you know, Irene runs with it, goes into her database, right? She gets the referral, she gets a repeat business. And I was just, I couldn't handle the sign call. So she went and got, what's every client worth? $100,000, right? So I just gave Irene $100,000 because I was too busy. Right? In theory, she does, she does a good job nurturing and taking care of the client, right? which she does an excellent job of. Okay, so that's where you get to, into leverage. You want to keep the things kind of, hey, why not give me the 100 grand? <laughs> keep the 100 grand instead of giving it to Irene, right? Um, when you have administration, also even put in there slash systems, you know, um, who can take on more responsibility to manage the process, a new team member. Again, if the, t if the thought of having somebody else around you is like, oh my God, I don't know where I'm going to put them. I don't want them around me. Like, ugh, not a good time to start a team right? You got to actually, because you're going to need to be around them, right? Um, this is, again, back to the leads, a good telltale sign. If you're, if you got too many traditional leads when it's slow, right? If you're a seasonally busy realtor, it can get, I know what it's like, and we're going to talk about some strategies. It's like, well, I'm really busy in spring, but then July to April of next year, I'm slow or not as slow, and I don't need an assistant. We have some strategies around that, but Again, the telltale sign when it starts, if you're giving out leads when it's slow, you're like, oh my gosh, I'm too busy in November and December or January. Very good sign that you need to potentially look at a team. Right. Um, and too many new clients are preventing you from working with A clients. So the biggest thing with this, of course, is lead generation. Right. We all know that. If, if you're consistently generating leads and you're carrying listings and getting signed calls and all that kind of stuff, and you're just letting that money go right through your hands, that's the biggest telltale sign is your lead generation things. On the flip side, and I'll just ask any of the questions, agree, disagree, did I miss anything on this? I know I go fast, so. Um, when is the right time to join a team? Flip side, right? So a lot of these will be inverted, right? But essentially, um, this is totally what I find, when your skills are sharp, but lead generation is exhausted, okay? If you, um, and why I say your skills are sharp is because again, I'm kind of getting ahead of myself here, but um, you need to be of value to a team. If you're an untrained, unskilled, un, you know, motivated, no lead, get not, what do you bring into the table? No one's gonna actually hire you, hate to break to you, right? Um, and we'll get into the whole training part in a little bit, but if, if your skills aren't sharp or lead generation is exhausted, and again, by lead generation is exhausted, I don't mean inconsistent, right? Most realtors have inconsistent lead generation exhausted as men like you've done everything you've tried everything you are tapped out you can't generate a leap of the life you those are generally the people i will encourage to join teams if they cannot generate but hey no there's a lot of them i've had excellent realtors if you gave them a client they'll take great care of them uh you know they're they're you know they're prompt they're courteous they respond in time they're great at looking for homes they're great at writing offers their contracts are tight they just have a hard problem generating leads those are some people that sometimes can be built for a team and why I say, if your skills aren't sharp, I would say that you need some time sharpening the skills, right? And I'll get into why teams may or may not be that option. But anyways, um, this is one. Yeah, absolutely no interest in running a business, right? This is the hardest part of the job. Well, you don't have a job, right? You have a business. This is the hard part. Running a business is the hard part of being in real estate. Showing homes, going out to million dollar listings and whatever else, doing open houses 
is not that hard. Okay? It's not that difficult. It gets annoying. I get it. And you're writing on 15 houses and losing them all. I get the stress and the frustration part. But as far as difficulty goes, it's not a high difficulty level. What you're in here is running a business. And if you have no interest in running a business whatsoever, you hate all the business stuff. Uh, there's, as an example, there's a team member. I'm not going to call her out. But anyways, team member, an amazing salesperson. Fantastic. Join a team, and at that point, you don't even you don't need a team. Like you can run your own business for crying out You can you can run your own team. Like you have enough business. And the answer was, I have no interest whatsoever in running a business. I hate the marketing. I hate the planning. I hate doing the deals. I hate or I don't feel. I hate doing the deal sheets. I hate doing the administration. I hate all that other stuff. I just want to go show homes. Okay, so be it. Right. So if you have zero interest in running a business. Um, again, you have to not care about your name or awards. Okay, because remember, two or more agents writing under one person's name, right? So you do lose some identity, right? You do lose some, you know, you know, the the, the team leader goes on the chairman's club events to Portugal. Team members aren't coming. The team member goes on the top achiever stuff, not the team members. That's just how it goes. Sometimes it works, sometimes it can do some stuff, right? And some teams are better or worse, or you know, more favorable to promoting their team than others. Some team members are completely invisible. You'll never know. Other ones promote them a little bit more, but you have to check that out. But eventually, if you're out there trying to make a name for yourself and win awards, team ain't the way to go. Okay. Um, when a team is hiring and provides what you need. So that's, an, that's a big one here, right? It's not just to join a team because there's a team in the round. There's teams everywhere, right? There's people you can team up with, partner up with, whatever. But you have to make sure a team is actually hiring and, and has the ability to provide what you need, which we're going to get into in a second. Right, you've asked the right questions and done the math, which we will do <laughs> together. Um, and again, and this is kind of when you can look in the mirror and say you've done all, tried all, worked your heart out, and the results aren't there. Okay, and this is just generally my feeling. It doesn't mean that you have to, you know. Again, there's there's been some people who have great results and they just some of these other things are important to them, and so they join a team, which is fine. But in my experience, you know, it's uh, and we'll kind of go over this, but it's. Um, you know, doing it and making it on your own in this business is the most financially rewarding. It's the most fulfilling. Sorry, your own team has the most leverage, right? You don't have some of those things on a team. Again, I'm not anti-team, but um, it's kind of, in my opinion, it shouldn't be the first choice. It should be a last resort. That might be a little harsh as far as last resort goes, but hopefully, you get know what I mean? Like, <laughs> right? It shouldn't be like, oh, I just want to join a team because it's going to be happy and wonderful. It's like, well, and again, once we get through the rest of it, it might make some more sense. <laughs> but again, I think it's like you got to try it, you got to do everything, you got to.
I really hope not. <laughs> Shit. Anyways. Um, oh, I don't really care about myself, though. I guess I should do that, though. Oh, 20 bucks says this is going to screw up. And I didn't have been muted for the last hour. Oops. Okay. Um, so this one, is, as an example, 8515 on sphere of influence, right? So if you, that's a really, I'll say from a team leader standpoint, it's a very generous team leader, giving, having charge you 15% for your sphere of influence and do 70, 30 team generated stuff. Now in this example, again, this would be, in my opinion, from a team leader standpoint, way too cheap. And uh, it's, it's very generous to the team members. Keep in mind, there's a couple other things. They, the 795 fee board and RLP, so there's more. In this case, there's more skin in the game. They have more monthly fees, but they get gen more generous splits. This also, this team, if you're that, let's say, if that type of split, what type of value do you think they provide? Right, on those five things, where they hang out? They're all in culture and collaboration. That's the majority of why they're there. That's the majority of why the people work for them and all that kind of stuff. Very low on leads, a little bit, a um, little bit on systems, little bit on like little bit on everything, like two out of two out of fives on everything except for cultures like five. So that's but again, is it right? Is it wrong? No, it's just them and the people who joined that team. That's what they're actually looking for. If you want leads, not the team to go to. Make sense. Anyways, um, another one, this is just, they have one that's like just straight up 25% on everything. Um, you got to pay your board RLP and EO. That's on every team that we have. Everyone has to keep a team member has to have some skin in the game. And just so you know, the 795 fee, what that is. So that's our assistant fee, it's 795, 795 a month. Our policy is um, the first assistant, and when I say assistant, licensed assistant, so the first team member um, is on the house. So if I have, I'm on a team, Murray joins my team, there's no 795 fee, but I have Murray on my team and then Jesse's next. I'm getting charged. The office is charging me 795 for Jesse, right? So some teams will pass that on and say, okay, hey, welcome to my team, Jesse. You got 795 a month. You got to pay in this example. That's what happens. This team down here, I'm just going to show you the 795 is splits. I'm going to say, Hey, added a team member, but the 795 is split between you and Murray. And if, and if Gotham joins, it's another 75, you're all splitting it equal. So the more people I add, actually your costs rise. That makes sense? Mm -hmm. okay, so everyone's like, that's why there's so many different combinations here, right? Uh, it's 50% of the common one, I get 75, 25 in all sales. That's what I just mentioned, but there's a 75 split between all teams, 50, 50 in all sales, 75 split. And then we have one team flat fee sliding scale. So somebody has, hey, if you sell between, I'm making this up, Anything under five hundred thousand dollars, you get three grand. If it's all between five hundred and seven fifty, you get thirty-five hundred. If it's over a million, you get five grand. Oh, and by the way, once you hit twenty sales, then the scales all tick up a little bit, right? So it's a very their their fee their fee contract is like three pages long, and I can't stand that. It's very complicated. I can't track it, um, but that's what it is. So I just want to, does anybody have any questions on this? Because I know this is loaded. No, you'll send the slides to Seth, right? I will send the slides, yeah. yeah. It's all anonymous, so I think it's okay. But anyways, that's what it can look like. Okay. Okay, so this is more of a, of a team map. Well, both people can know this, but especially I'll say team leaders. Before you go forward, figuring out what you're going to charge, right? So we just kind of started with your why. Why am I doing this? What do I want to get out of it? Right. Um, here's the value. Here's who I am. Here's the value that I'm going to provide to my team members. Here's how I'm going to pitch it. Here's how I'm going to hire. Here's who I want them to be wired. All that stuff. And then it's here's the numbers you need to know enough what to charge them. Okay. You need to know how much each listing costs you. You have to know that. Right. You have to know your expenses before you can start trying to charge people. Right. Otherwise, you end up not. You end up not making money. They won a bunch of awards, but your profit is zero. That's dumb. Right. Congratulations on your award. Um, you need to know how much each buyer costs you. What does each person, right? What does a buyer cost you? What's your closing gift, right? Or whatever it is, your system for each buyer, right? Um, you need to know how much A, B, and C cost you in your database, right? So how much are you gonna have budgeting to market to spend on your database, right? All the A's. And again, it's impossible to have everything calculated, but more or less, like, hey, my A's gonna get 
newsletters and a buck and they're going to get the calendars and they're going to get this and they're going to get that and they're going to get at least a couple of jets tickets and a client party and whatever else, right? So you can kind of a loose budget, right? Your advertising marketing budget, of course, you need to know that. And any of your other fixed monthly costs, how much is your office space, your franchise fees, board fees, salaries, whatever else you have, right? You need to base, essentially, if I was going to sum up all that, you need to know your expenses, right? Reasonably forecasted. And then you need to cut concentrate on the other end of things, right? Because profitability, right? Because if team leader, right, one of the goals is to be profitable, right? You're a little brokerage, right? You don't want to, anybody want to work and not make a profit? That's not my book. So <laughs> anyways, you have to be profitable. Um, so you need to know, and profit is defined by income minus expenses equals profit, right? So you have to estimate how many ends you're going to do, listings versus buyers, total GCI, commission per end. You have to have a loose idea on what's going to happen in your business, right? And since I lose, I need a pretty decent idea. And again, why listings versus buyers? The budget, your expenses, right? If you can kind of know, hey, I'm going to, I'm going to do probably have 20 listings this year or 30 listings. Well, now you can forecast how much that listing costs you and how many buyers and how much buyer costs you can forecast those expenses. Right, you need to build in a profit margin to reinvest into the team. Okay, so you build in your profit margin. So, as an example, hey, I'm just making this up here. Jeez, all this stuff it's going to cost me a hundred thousand dollars this year. Right, great. My forecast is going to be three hundred thousand dollars in in revenue. Okay, that's a profit of two hundred thousand um, dollars. Again, you can build that into what you if you project what that next person is bringing in. Gotham is going to come in and join my team. What are his projections and what am I going to take? And it has to be, uh, again, a margin of profit in there, right? You don't want to lose money on listings. You don't want to lose money on buyers. Any questions on that? All right, we're almost done here. <clears throat> I'm losing my voice. Okay, a few of the rules of thumb. Um, again, this is just what I generally see uh, on teams and the ones that are, because uh, I'll say this, I've seen teams that don't budget properly from the beginning. And then they have to go back to their team members and increase splits. Not a great conversation to have, right? And it's a tough one. Um, you have to really try. And that's, again, it's not a fun conversation. Um, so if you do it right from the beginning and you do the math on it, it should be able to work. You might have to change at some point, right? Because the economy's change and prices change and commissions change, all that kind of stuff. But um, anyways, it should be a larger script for listings, right? As a team leader, you should take more for listings because you're more fixed costs, right? Especially if the market ever changed and the listings don't sell in a week and you have to carry them for 60, 90 days, right? Or if it's a rural listing or a million dollar list, not a million now, two million, right? It's going to sit around a while, right? Um, also, split should be larger for team generated business, right? I'll generally side on the, on the team for this. Um, if I give you a lead or if I let you do my open house, Mark, and you get a lead out of it, you should be paying me more. Why? Because you would have never had that if I didn't exist. And I think that should be valuable. And you should charge more. And I think as a team member, you should pay more for it. Um, but I also think the other side, sphere of influence business should be a lower split, right? Murray's on my team. Murray sells his sister a house. I've never met his sister. Not in a million years. Never said hi to her. Nothing like that. I would feel a little bit weird taking 50% of his money. Right, personally. That's just me. Every business is different. There's someone there, you saw 50 50 across the board. Not right or wrong, just what it is. Right. If you are doing the same, going back to that 50 50 across the board, you better be generating a lot of leads. Right. If you are a lead providing team lead, you can charge more because leads I can track back. Right. How do I put them? How do I value my culture and collaboration or my training program? Right. As a team leader. What I can, when I can go is Murray, I gave you that lead. I gave you 15 leads this year. You closed 10 of them and I just gave you $60,000. That I can track. That's a very easy number to, to follow, right? Hey, so sorry, so backing up. Um, three of them should be lower split unless, again, Murray, you're brand new and I got to walk you through everything for the first few sales, right? In that case, I'd probably go 50 50, you know, on the beginning and then, hey, after deals, after five deals, now you can go up to a higher split for your sphere because I'm going to really babysit you for the first few. Just ideas and options, okay? Team's got to be profitable. What if you weren't there? Um, again, that's for team leaders, right? Is your team making money? What if you took your sales, if you took your commissions out of your team, is your team making money? Right? So again, pretend yourself like a little brokerage, right? The whole idea is to not sell. So if you were going to say you want to, as a team leader, like I have my goal is not to sell houses anymore. I just want to run my team. 
the team better be making money, better be profitable without your commissions being in there. That's how you, that's how you can really tell if it's a properly running team and a proper business. <clears throat> okay, uh, also just for the team leaders, this is one. Um, consider paying yourself the same splits as your team members. So essentially you're having yourself, your, your team is a separate entity, right? So I'll just, for the sake of the argument here, right? This is my team, it's the Michael Frey's team. It's my Michael Frey's team. And my agents are, ooh, bad penmanship, right? Michael, right? Gotham and Fatima, right? And we're all paying the same splits back to the team. After that, the team pays expenses and marketing, all that kind of stuff. And there's going to be a profit for the team, right? A surplus. What you can do with that? We invest it into the business. Maybe you take on new marketing things. Maybe you hire a new person uh, for graphics. Or who knows what you do? You know, or if I'm feeling really nice, I can just pay everyone a bonus, right? Or pay myself a bonus. But consider doing that because as a team leader, what that does, it neutralizes people complaining about splits. Right? Well, I can't believe it's 50-50 split. I'm paying 50-50 to the team. And same split. Well, you get a bonus. doesn't matter. I'm still paying that to the team. And you can see the team's numbers, how where the profitability is and all that kind of stuff and where the team's reinvesting. It just pulls yourself out of it a little bit. They can take an objective look because it's like a little brokerage, right? Just ideas. Whew. I'm running out of steam. Uh, bonuses should be discussed, clear, and should include in individual and team achievement, okay? So bonuses, I think, are fantastic. A way of incentivizing people, especially uh, this is in the realm of team members, right? So, hey, when you get to a certain point, you know, after X amount of deals, or if you get so many, well, usually after X amount of deals, you know, maybe there's a bonus, you split increases, or it's a flat fee, $1,000 bonus, or whatever it is. As a team, right? Hey, we, here's our targets. We hit our target, everyone's getting a bonus. Right? It kind of brings everyone together and incentivize people. Hey, we're all motivated by money, right? A little bit, to some extent. So bonuses are very good. So if you are, again, looking at joining a team, is there a bonus structure? Is there any incentive for you to work hard? Is there any incentive for you to contact your database? Is there any incentive? What's the incentive to, to perform, right? And so look at bonuses. And again, the clarity is the big one. Make sure it's clear, written down, concise in the contract. <clears throat> all right. One of the best pieces of advice I can give you, you've probably heard this before that I've said it a hundred times, date before you get married. Okay, do not jump into bed with anybody joining a team or starting a team or anything like that. Get to know each other a little bit first. Get to know these questions a little bit first. See how each other works a little bit. Maybe you can go on some tests, go on some dates, go on a few appointments together, give them a couple of leads, see what they're like. Same thing, maybe you start doing a couple open hours for the team or maybe you hang around them for a day or whatever it is if you're looking at joining them. Hey, can I just be around for a day or two. Can I see what you're doing, right? Maybe there's ways of dating before you get married. And the flat rate part is, is let's say, again, if you're a team member or a team leader, sorry, and you're really busy right now, and like, I really want to commit and get invested and contract with someone and do all this rebranding and all this stuff, consider just paying them a flat rate for, for showings, right? Say, hey, you know what? Let's, or, or on a per deal basis, right? Hey, we're in. You know, I'm really busy right now. How about we, we tag team, you know, a few of these, these deals here and I'll cut you in on something and we'll work together a little bit just on this one, you know, 75, 25, 50, 50 for this one, right? Or, hey, I need, I'm really busy. I can't show homes, um, you know, so Mark will please show me some homes. I'll pay 50 bucks a house. And I actually have a whole, like, I have a whole cheat sheet list for that too. If you guys need it, ask for it and I'll send it to you. You can have some like ideas on rates and things like that that a lot of agents use in the office. Right, so just offload some of that work when you're really busy and then you don't have to be married. Does that make sense? It's the best advice I can give you right there is date before you get married. All right, and the cheesy acronym of the day, right? Okay, any questions? I'm happy to answer. That's it for this part. Oof, so hot.